So, we are picking up right where we left off. I hope your brain is kind of like, whoa, those are some weird, crazy, big ideas this morning. And I hope you see why I began the way that I did. But at the moment, what we've been kind of talking about is like, you know, Usain Bolt was running like this and like, wait, he did that. And, you know, a lot of the things we're describing, it's difficult to talk about because we don't have precise language. So we are going to introduce a whole bunch of terms. Some of them you met this morning and I just want to get them all in context. But there's also going to be some new ones and also some new notation because words are cool. But if math is known for one thing, it's that we replace them as quickly as we can with symbols because then they're faster to work with. Okay. So let's start at the top. Do you remember we were looking at the graph, right? And we said, okay, rise over run. And we looked at the triangle and all that kind of thing. We said rise over run we would normally call gradient. But then we introduced a super fancy name for that. We called it the the difference quotient. The difference quotient. And it's a fancy phrase, but it is what it says. It's measuring differences. Like, how far did you go here? How fast, how far did he run? What's the difference between this moment in time and this moment in time? Grab a seat quickly. So it's about measuring differences, but it's not just measuring differences. What we're doing is we're dividing rise over run, or vertical change over horizontal change. That's a quotient when you divide things, okay? So we did say it is a gradient, but it's not just any gradient. It's the gradient of this line that cuts your particular function, your particular graph, at a couple of spots. What did we call that kind of line? Um, uh, a second or a second, right? I, I literally have no idea how it's meant to be pronounced, but we know what we're talking about. This is a line that slices across the graph at two distinct points. Bless you. So that was a difference quotient, right? But then right at the very end, and I sort of did it with some, a bit of hand waving, and I did it quite quickly, we talked about what happened if you took these two points, which were h units apart horizontally. And we said, what if you compress that h into like zero? What if you said those two points were not separate, but the same? What I did was I took that same difference quotient. And instead of just evaluating that fraction and simplifying it, right? We did a whole bunch of algebra with it. What we did was we said, what if we could take the limit as h approaches zero? Where is it going, right? Um, this idea of a limit, bless you, takes this h sort of out of the equation, right? So what happens is you no longer get the gradient of a secant, as you can see here, and please draw this diagram next to your words as well. We get a different gradient. We get the gradient of something else, namely the, starts with a t, the tangent. And why is it called a tangent again? Tangent? Ta what does tangent mean? It's tangible. Yeah, it, it just touches as if it's like tangent is about, is about touching, like tangible, right? So we said that's what we got. And what was interesting about this was when we did our gradients of secants, you just got numbers like negative 5 and negative 1 or 3 or something like that. But then when we worked out the gradient of the tangent, it had x's in it. Do you remember that? Well, it didn't have x's, it had one x. Now this is actually, and it was right at the end, so I kind of glossed over it. This is actually a really big freaking deal, right? Because now, we're not just looking at individual numbers. We're looking at the gradient, and it changes depending on where you are. Which makes sense, because like some bits are steep and going down. Some bits are shallow, or, or just flat across. What was the gradient, by the way, when it's flat across? Zero. Gradient is zero, because there's no rise, and there's the run there. So here's this weird idea, right? That the gradient, when you calculate it, is no longer just a number. The gradient itself is a function. Thank you, right? The gradient is a function. It's not just a number which you can say, boom, there it is, 8 or something like that. The gradient's a function that changes in response to what value of x you put in there. Okay? Now, being that it is itself a function, I'm going to use function notation to describe it. Now, I could just call it, like if this red thing was f of x, actually I might write that. If this red thing was f of x, I could call the, uh, the gradient function something else, g of x, if you like. But I want to capture that the gradient function is related to this original function. So instead of giving it a whole separate name, I'm going to call it f dash x. So that dash indicates, hey, 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 this is related to f of x. That's where I came from. f dash x is a way of indicating a function, not just any function. It's the gradient function of f of x, whatever that happened to be. We started off with x squared minus 4x, and this is what we landed with. Okay? Now, because this gradient function 
it comes from the original function. We give it another name. And you might have heard this one thrown around a little bit by your year 12 friends. We call it the derivative because a derivative literally means it came from something else, right? It's like, um, you know, uh, sugar is a derivative of the cane plant, right? Like they process it and they get this stuff. And it's like, here it is, a derivative, okay? So the derivative comes from your original function. And from now on, we're going to use these phrases and words interchangeably. We might say, hey, find the gradient function. Uh, calculate, determine what the derivative is, okay? They both mean the same thing. Find this f dash x, this 2x minus 4 in this case, okay? Now, the last bit of language we're going to introduce just for now is, well, what is that process called when you're finding the derivative, when you're finding the gradient function, okay? Um, remember, it's all about differences, right? It's about trying to calculate how fast is something changing, moving from something to something different, okay? So the process of going from your original function to your derivative, like getting to that thing, because it's all about this difference quotient thing, that's where we started. This process is called differentiating. Say that again. This process of going from your original function to what's the gradient function? What's the derivative? It's called differentiating, or I guess the noun would be differentiation, okay? Please note, um, and this gets misused all the time, but even though it's called a derivative, it's not called deriving. That means something completely different in mathematics. Um, you know, you could derive a proof for something. It has nothing to do with calculus. This is the word that we've got here. If you want a sort of anchor for why it's that, think about where we started. This is all about calculus is the mathematics of change, things becoming something to something different, hence differentiation. Is, the, is that a divide? Is that like a thing in the middle? Hold on, which thing in the middle? The of the this line. Yeah. So this line indicates to me like the process of going from a function to change that into its derivative. It's just, it's just a change, right? Uh, that change is called differentiating. Make sense? Long word. Thankfully, you won't really have to write it very much, but you will have to say it and you will read it a whole bunch. Okay?